Hello, and welcome to my next executive series video. Our topic today is pyrogens and endotoxins. Aaron Snyder here from Quality Systems Explained, where we make quality systems simple for you. If you're new, make sure you subscribe. Check out the status bar below for our agenda. Stick around to the end for those bonus questions. Our topic, pyrogens and endotoxins, is covered by 1345 section 7.5.2 and section 7.5.7. .7. It has its own ISO standard 11737-3, sterilization of healthcare products, microbiological methods, part three, bacterial endotoxin testing. Pyrogen and endotoxin in five words. Remove substances that cause fevers. A pyrogen is a substance that when introduced into the blood system, the circulatory system, can produce a fever. There are two main classes of pyrogens, microbiological and non-microbiological. The most common pyrogenic contaminant is bacterial endotoxins. Bacterial endotoxins are pieces of the dead cell wall of a gram-negative bacteria. Basically, it's the body or the corpse of the bacteria which remains on our medical device. That's what we have to worry about. It's also important to note that you can have endotoxins from gram-positive bacteria, viruses, and funguses as well. They present a lower risk than the gram-negative type. The best control for medical device companies is to prevent endotoxins from being on their product. If the product happens to be contaminated with endotoxins, there are processes that can be used to remove those endotoxins from the product. Those processes require extremely high temperatures. So most medical devices cannot go through the depyrogenating or the, the removal of the endotoxins from the medical device. Medical devices that enter the bloodstream will require routine pyrogen testing as part of the process for releasing that product. For more information, check out ISO 11737-3 for more information on pyrogens and endotoxins. So how do I know this is working? First, if my product requires pyrogen and endotoxin testing, I have a formally established program with procedures that's part of my quality management system. Second, I have controls in my manufacturing process to prevent pyrogens and endotoxins from getting on my product. And then third, if I have product that tests, that fails the pyrogen or endotoxin test, then I take the right action. Most of the time I will be scrapping that product. Sometimes in some limited circumstances, there may be ways to rework that product and get it to an acceptable state. So how do I know it's not working? Well, first, my product requires endotoxin testing and I have no formal program established. Second, in my manufacturing processes, sources of contamination, either the air, water system, whatever, people, they're contaminating my product. I don't have the right controls established and effective as part of the quality management system. And then finally, I have test failures for endotoxins and pyrogens, and I either ignore them or I don't address them appropriately, and that product is ultimately released to the end user. And now for the three bonus questions. Who manages our endotoxin pyrogen program? And where does that testing take place? Second, have we had any pyrogen or endotoxin failures in the last three years? If yes, can I get a list of those? And then finally, are we allowed to rework our product if it fails by pyrogens or endotoxins? Thank you for watching. Please like, subscribe, share, and comment. Send any questions to me at qms.jedi at gmail.com. This is Aaron Snyder from Quality Systems Explained, making quality systems simple for you.